In this video, we're going to be discussing a manual technique known as a tibial meniscal mobilization. This is a good manual technique if you're wanting to decrease pain associated with a meniscus tear of the knee. Okay? So let's suppose that you have a patient who you're trying to rehab conservatively. They have a meniscus tear and they walk into the clinic one day and they've got a pretty substantial amount of meniscus pain. Okay? Well, we're always going to use the test, treat, retest model. So before I do the mobilization, I want to test their pain level with a particular activity. Let's say they have pain with walking. So I just have them walk around the room, let's say, and say, what's your pain level while doing this? Maybe they say it's a six out of 10 pain. Well, then I'm gonna do the mobilization, that's my treatment, and afterward to determine if it's effective or not, I'm gonna retest them doing the same activity. So pain level while walking. And if it decreased to a four out of 10, well, then it was effective to some extent, okay? So I need to do this model to know if the mobilization works or not, okay? And why would you wanna do this? Well, if a patient has six out of 10 pain, they're probably gonna have some reduced exercise tolerance. And to rehab a meniscus conservatively, you have to do things like strengthen the quadriceps, strengthen the hamstrings, et cetera, et cetera. So reducing that pain can help with exercise tolerance and get the most out of the session and a better rehab. Okay. So how do you do this? Well, the patient's going to be positioned in supine, as you see right here, with their treatment side leg supported at the posterior thigh, and then the ankle and foot over here. And you can do that by stacking towels or ankle weights under these sites. And the gist of this is that their calf and, of course, the knee joint need to be elevated off the treatment table, as you see right here. Okay. Now, of course, you're gonna begin with part one of this mobilization, and you're not gonna to proceed to part two unless part one actually reduces pain or abolishes it. And if it doesn't do anything for pain level or potentially increases it, you're definitely not gonna to proceed to part two, okay? So how do you do part one of this mobilization? Well, the PT will firmly grasp the patient's distal thigh around the femur. That's with my stabilizing hand. That's gonna be my left hand over here. So I'm stabilizing the femur there. And then I'm also gonna grasp the proximal tibia at the tibial plateau. And that's gonna be with my mobilizing hand with my right side. So now wrapping around the tibial plateau, okay? And I'm going to exert the following forces with my mobilizing hand. And I'm gonna do that at the tibial plateau relative to the femur. So my stabilizing hand is preventing rotation or really any movement of the femur and I'm doing all these mobilizations with my right hand, which is mobilizing. And I'm gonna use the Maitland grading system. So using grades one and two for pain reduction and grades three and four for improving range of motion, if there's a restriction. The two forces I'm gonna apply are a posterior tibial glide and tibial external rotation, and I'm going to exert those simultaneously, okay? I usually assess posterior tibial glide first, okay? That's what I'm actually doing right here. So I'm simply pressing down, okay, beginning with grades one and two. And once that's okay, then I'm gonna assess tibial external rotation with that, okay? So that's what you'll see right here. So now I'm applying a posterior glide with external rotation of the tibia. Again, you're gonna begin with grades one and two. If those were painful, then there's no reason to go to grades three and four. So you're gonna do grades one and two to see if there's any pain reduction. And if the pain begins to reduce or abolish, you can consider using grades three and four mobilizations, okay? So that's part one. You might do that for 45 seconds to a minute and do that for two to three sets. If that mobilization is decreasing the patient's pain or potentially abolishing it, then you can consider moving to part two of the mobilization, okay? So for part two, it's gonna look very similar at the start. The PT will firmly grasp the patient's distal thigh, just as before. That's my stabilizing hand. And then my right hand here is mobilizing. That's gonna wrap around the proximal tibia at the tibial plateau. And we're going to exert the following forces at the tibial plateau relative to the femur. Posterior tibial glide, tibial external rotation, but instead of actually doing this as a Maitland mobilization, we're just gonna bring it to a pain-free end range and hold there, okay? So let's get to the end range first, okay? There's the end range for posterior tibial glide and tibial external rotation. Now, while holding this position, 
you're going to have the patient gently activate the quadricep isometrically. Okay? This actually helps to really get the meniscus in a better position. Okay? And so a lot of times after this technique, the patient will report dramatically less pain once they get up and start walking or doing whatever activity it is that you tested in the first place. Okay? And generally what I do is five reps of five second isometric holds the first time I do this with five seconds of relaxation in between. So from here at end range, I'm gonna have the patient isometrically contract the quads. There it is. Hold that for five seconds, and then the patient relaxes as you see right there. Wait another five seconds, and then we'll do that again. Isometrically contract for five seconds, and so on and so forth, okay? Again, this part you would not proceed to unless part one reduced pain or abolished it, okay? If it did nothing for pain or potentially increased it, there's no reason to go to this technique because you are taking it to end range and holding it there. Okay, and of course, we did the treatment, so we'd need to retest, and we'd retest with whatever the initial test was. If it was pain level while squatting, then we'd do pain level while squatting for the retest, okay? And again, we'd know if it was effective because the pain level they report would be less. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the rationale for and how to perform a tibiomeniscal mobilization. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.